Hi, I'm Lori, and this is my son, Griffin. And Griffin has cerebral palsy. Um, and so he was born with it. He's five and a half now. And <laughs> he also had torticollis, torticollis when he was born, along with his cerebral palsy. Originally, we noticed Griffin was very delayed. He couldn't roll over. He couldn't turn his head. Um, and when we started taking him to the doctors, they basically told us he had cerebral palsy and we'd have to wait and see. They didn't know if he would talk. They didn't know if he was walk. They were already talking about braces and everything and he was only a few months old. And I brought him here to Dr. Barry. And he was the only person <laughs> that actually told us, let's see what we can do instead of let's just wait and see what happens as he got bigger. So. We brought him here. Dr. Barry started working with him and um, my son within the first couple of weeks went from not being able at nine months, not being able to roll over to rolling over to sitting up on his own. And I remember walking into the neuro neurologist's office when he was um, 16 months old and the orthopedic doctor in the neurologist's office had already spoken about putting him in a brace to help him walk. And they were already talking about how they, weren't, they didn't think he'd be able to talk due to where all the extensive damage was around his visual cortex. And they were shocked that he was talking and he took his first steps. So we came here because Mom. Dr. Barry was the only person who even gave us any hope. So Griffin has had a lot of pain and the regular orthopedic doctors told us to, well, we'll handle it by 24 seven, literally putting this kid on Motrin. We'll just give him Motrin every four to six hours, no matter what, whether he's complaining or not. And I just couldn't bring myself to drug my kid all of the time, regardless of whether or not he needed it. So we come here, he sleeps better, We've had um, different issues, and then lately we've, we didn't know, they told us we didn't know what to look for until he started school. We started school, and we hadn't come for a while because he seemed to be physically doing so much better, and we started seeing all the problems that they kept saying these things were going to happen when he got into school, learning issues, and he was falling behind in kindergarten, so we were thinking about pulling him out because it was so stressful. His sensory overload issues, um, just, it was just too much in the classroom for him. So we came back, you know, we came every once in a while, but then I came back and just needed more help. And just the few suggestions that have already, Dr. Berry's already asked for the um, diet wise and with the school and the little exercises that we're doing at home, his teacher is telling me it's like a light switch has been flipped for this kid. So his world is, it's improving and it's changing where our neurologist, our orthopedic doctor, our pediatrician, they're just like, well, we'll just see how he does. The developmental pediatrics department with PCH, all of these doctors, this kid has probably eight, nine doctors and every single one with the exception of Dr. Barry has said, well, let's wait and see. Well, let's see how he does next month. Well, once he gets into school or once he gets more used to school. And I don't think telling people not to have any hope just to sit back and saying, well, let's see, is an answer. This is not traditional. My, his doctors are like, why are you going there? But from his teacher to the director at his school, my son was running away at school. He was a flight risk. <laughs> they had to give his picture to every teacher because he would freak out because he would go into sensory overload. We have not had one issue like that since we started doing the changes that Dr. Barry asked them to make in the classroom and they were so simple. Put filters, you know, where is he sitting in the classroom? This metrodome and the changes to his diet. He's not running away from school. Still doesn't like school, <laughs> but he's not running away. He's not taking off out of the classroom. You know, they have, you know, these simple little things. He said, let's activate the other side of his brain. And he went from getting zeros on spelling tests to getting A's. And it's, it's, a scary, it's scary to think that the other alternative was to just drug my kid. So 
after implementing the different things that Dr. Berry has asked for the diet, um, doing exercises at home, coming here, and some of these are just so amazingly simple. I just don't know why everybody doesn't do them. We've seen an improvement in Griffin's sleeping habits. We've seen, um, like the kid will sleep through the night and that's almost, that's pretty much unheard of. He, this is a kid who would get up four or five times at night crying that he was hurting or just crazy things um, to, he's sleeping all the way through night. He's going to bed easy. He has, with these simple changes, he's coming to us saying, hey mom, let's do our thumb exercise. And, you know, just the amazing results. Like he looks forward to coming and seeing Dr. Barry <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> and um, just to seeing what's new. And now it's like, gosh, you know, I can take my kid places and we can handle it. You know, it may not be perfect and it may not be easy as it is with one of my other kids or someone else's kid, but I think that he's getting, he's not coping as much. He's actually living. And we would go places like, okay, we're gonna go to the store, we're gonna cope and get through the store. We're gonna go even to the zoo, you know, and he's coming out of coping and that was no way to live. So we've just noticed slight changes to where he's actually enjoying life a little bit more and experiencing things in a whole different way. Where as before, I think he would go into kind of an overload and now he's, he's enjoying it. So it's not, he, I don't think it's a, life is as stressful for him. I think he has, he's getting skills that, to help him manage. And we are too, because we're like, all right, Griffin's in overload. Dr. Bray said, let's get up in March. We're gonna get up in March. And I don't care if I'm in the middle of a movie theater, we'll go stand on the side <laughs> and we'll march. And then it's like, we're good. So I don't know where this path will completely take us, but we're, we're definitely, we're on it and this is just, this is the right choice for us. I think that Dr. Trevor Berry and this place, the people who work here, they have such great open hearts and it's a, it's a place of hope. So I would recommend anybody, I don't care if it's a migraine, if your child has, you or your child has a brain injury, cerebral palsy or anything like that. I have brought, I have six kids, they've all come here. I have, I do want to mention, I have a 13 year old who had a concussion that was undiagnosed. I brought him to Dr. Barry just to get adjusted because he plays football. And Dr. Barry, I thought my kid was rolling his eyes because he was, you know, <laughs> turning into a horrible 13 year old teenager. And instead he actually had had a concussion and there was a problem. And Dr. Barry saw it, he started treating him for it and something that the doctors thought maybe his eyes were just dry, that's why he kept rolling his eyes. And my son went from in football, constantly getting tackled, finding out that he was technically going blind for a couple of seconds. Things like that. Griffin, he's helped my kids with reflux. <laughs> so, ear infections, everything. And we've been able to step away from so much modern medicine and give them such more healthier lifestyles and bodies. It's um, Amazing. I can't imagine why people wouldn't go to the chiropractor, especially not a neurological chiropractor where he's looking at so much more than just how are your joints feeling today. So it's so much more than that. Dr. Barry. <laughs> well, um. Are you done? Yeah. Um, my mom, um, is really kind of cool. She loves me and um, um, that's all I say. <laughs>